heads up with this video. This is this is downright. It's, it's pretty bad. It's pretty it's, bad. It's, it's, it's pretty not bad. good. Every I like. Not, anyways, let's play it, no, kid. No, let's play, play it. it. Play it. Yeah. And it, we'll go to you, kid. So there's two videos, and then we'll go to kid first. So let's. I know you've seen it, but you've no, had time fine. to process it. You had time to process it though, so you might have your because they're gonna be shocked about what was said in here. Congresswoman, the White House saying they're going to lower the repayment threshold to 5% and then find a path to relief for student loan borrowers. In your opinion, is this an aggressive enough plan? Again, I want borrowers to know that you are powerful and President Biden heard you. Um, the fact ah. that they came out quickly to say that they are not done fighting for borrowers. And so ah. I'm, I'm encouraged that they are prepared to be nimble. And I will, at this point, be focused on oversight and implementation to ensure that whatever we do is something where this meaningful, life-changing, transformative relief is felt swiftly. After uh, Biden's uh, initial executive action, uh, there were some out of eligible borrowers, 26 million people, already signed up for this out of eligible borrowers and i think 16 million were already approved and so people's lives are in limbo and katie when you uh layer this with the fact that in august payments are set to resume uh with interest again this is deeply consequential um, there's a psychological toll, there's an economic burden, and we all suffer for it. I represent a healthcare mecca, and when I've talked to presidents and CEOs of those hospitals and healthcare uh, centers about what can we do to replenish uh, this bench, since so many healthcare workers have uh, left because of fatigue and burnout post pandemic. And they said the number one thing that you can do is cancel student debt. So of course this is about the burden on borrowers, but there's a greater implication a writ large. And this Supreme Court must be reformed and expanded. They continue to overturn the will of the majority of the people and to make history for all the wrong reasons, legislating from the bench and being political from the bench. They have been enlisted as co-conspirators from the state legislature to the lower courts all the way to the supreme court to advance this extremist far-right agenda it is nothing but intersectional oppression oh wow a lot of word salad uh from a uh, hack fraud democrat you are powerful but guess what you're still going to get it up the wazoo you are powerful but we're still going to ignore you you are powerful but we'll give you platitude after platitude after platitude i don't know if uh, iana presley realizes this or not but the Democrat who's in the White House currently does have the power to do something, but yet him and his administration are willingly not doing anything. What we are seeing here is a big middle finger to anyone that gave money, time, and energy to getting these hack fraud justice Democrats into the goddamn Congress. None of these politicians are consistent. None of these politicians are really offering you a plan. What she's saying is that there's a plan to do a plan to later on deliberate on that will go to a committee mm. that will later be shelved in the background. That's what's happening, Democratic voters. You just got platitude after platitude. Hell, I thought that message that uh, uh, that, that she gave to Colin from INN was a word salad. And I'm debating with myself which one is even worse. But they're both the same. It's nothing but words. Words. No follow through, no action. And yet these are the same kind of politicians that are going to be going on the campaign trail telling us we have to support the Democrat incumbent or we have to support whoever is a Democrat because only the Democrats can get things done. Ayanna Presley, this is a message for you, specifically for me from Hard Lens Media, but also everyone here at Do Dissidents and RBN. You have not followed through with any of your promises. You have allowed this administration to become more right wing and implement and still continue on with a lot of Trump's domestic and foreign policies. What are you doing to make things change? What are you willing to put on the table? What are you willing to risk? Are you willing to be risking the taking on the Democratic establishment? But I already know the answer to that. The answer is no. And you showed us that the first time when you chose not to do force to vote. So her actions here are consistent. It's word salad. She only uses people's heartstrings and emotions to make them feel like they can make something happen. She will not follow through. She will abandon you. And so this is the thing that we have to convince and tell voters who are diehard Democratic voters. This is the face of a liar. This is an individual that will abandon you. This is someone who doesn't like you, doesn't think about you, and doesn't respect you. Now, we here have been consistent, and yet all of us in one point or another have been vilified by the vote blue no matter who because, oh, we're raising the ruckus or, oh, we're, we're being offensive and profane. 
This right here is the most offensive thing I've ever seen. She's straight up lying to all of you suckers who thought that she was going to fight for you. She's only fighting for her political career. She's thinking four years down the road, eight years down the road, and you're not even in her rearview mirror, you suckers. You vote blue no matter who, hack fraud losers. <laughs> All right, let's play the second half, we're, and then we're we'll gonna go set to, that uh, to a beat. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll go to you, Russell and Keaton, uh, for the next comment. Let's play this. It's also about one minute forty four seconds. She just continues to do the same. I want, I'm glad you brought up the court expansion because that's obviously a dicey point. We heard President Biden himself saying that he was not a fan of that idea, that it politicizes an institution that, frankly, you and I both know has already been hyper-politicized and weaponized already. Do you think that one of those solutions, in addition to expanding the court, is perhaps actually instituting term limits as well for the justices sitting on the Supreme Court? I think everything should be uh, on the table. I'm a part of a uh, a growing coalition uh, called the Just Majority, representing the most marginalized groups who have been the most targeted um, by this extremist uh, Supreme Court. Uh, whether you're talking about they're advancing a national ban on abortion, uh, supporting the forced birth movement, uh, whether you're talking about housing justice, oh or whether you're talking about gutting affirmative action. Um, these are attacks on equity and education, on rights that have been earned. As a country, we've prided ourselves on adding to rights. And here's a Supreme Court that has been emboldened in rolling back the hands of time, uh, undermining and rolling back what should be fundamental civil human rights. So everything should be on the table, reform and expansion. And it is not that, it's not, uh, it's not, this, it's an idea that has precedent. Uh, in fact, Congress has done this six times before. So I'm certainly prepared to do the work in community to build consensus on this. Congresswoman Ayanna Presley, thank you so much for getting us started this second hour. And thank you so much for the messaging, because a lot of people need so to understand. Gonna, it's not just about the question. So, you, so you're not going to be like, hey, are you going to answer the question? That was great. I, I was rude because I was like, hey, Marianne, are you going to? answer any of these fucking questions I'm answering you. <laughs> and they that's considered uncivil when you like answer my fucking question. She obviously dodges her question. She's like, thank you for joining us, ma'am. Thank you for spreading your propaganda on our network. Jesus Christ, these people make me sick, man. Well, yeah, I mean, look, she, she started off in the previous video with a lie that Biden is taking swift action in response to this. He's not taking swift action. Yeah. He's, he actually told us in the press conference that day that it's going to take longer to get the executive order signed using the Higher Education Act because they have to do some administrative things first, right? Who knows if they actually have to do that, right? But let's say they do. He says it's going to take longer to sign this one than it took to sign the first one. Well, what people have to understand, and I did a little piece about this on our last show, is that it took him 16 months from the time he was given a memo on right. what to do to sign the first one and he didn't even sign the first one in accordance with the advice of that memo the memo told him use the higher education act so he waited 16 months from when he got that memo to do it the wrong way now he's saying it's going to take at least that long in fact longer to do it the second time well guess what's in 16 months from now the election 16 months from july 2023 is november 2024 so what he's telling you is we're not Absolutely. getting any action before the next vote you could have seen that coming, yes, right? Kid. That's number one. So that's a complete lie, right? That's but exactly then, then after she lies, she says, then she pivots to what we were talking about before, just these abstract sort of word salad talking points. We have to expand the court. We need to reform the court. We need term limits, but we can't do any expansion or reform or term limits. I have to go out and I have to do community work around that. I have to go out and build consensus work. This is all just buying time, much in the way that the DSA buys time and that our revolution buys time. It's all about just mm. eating up time, convincing people around you that you're doing good work so that you can continue to eat up time doing quote unquote good work that never results in anything. It's a lifestyle for these people. She's young. She's going to be in Congress for a very long time. She's in a safe blue district and she's very, very popular. She has high name ID. And this is her life now. Her life is building consensus around good ideas and doing the work in the community. It doesn't involve actually yeah. implementing a goddamn thing. You want to know that the dumbest left is the real dumb, dumb left or the left that's caught off guard by this. Right. Because mm -hmm. CJ, yeah. CJ, 
How many streams <laughs> and how many months ago did we tell you guys that, that Biden was saying that, so that look at our library? We warned you guys months and months ago. Months yeah. ago. I can recall three happen. three different thumbnails talking about this. I can recall that. Yes, go ahead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Most obvious ahead, that it was, was gonna happen. Remember, remember the boutique managerial class left. It's here to cultivate a dumb, dumb working class left. So they're here to guide the workers. Like, oh my God, we didn't see this coming. Right. Like, we, meanwhile, the, the the left that have revolutionary discipline, the people that actually care like us, we was warning you guys months before. Meanwhile, AOC and the Bernie Sanders like want to walk you into this loss. They want to walk you slowly into this. They want to waste right. your time. They want to get your expectation up, and they didn't want to. They want to do that energy dump when you lose. Like, damn man, we fight harder next time. Yeah, this is a massive loss. This is we got rally behind. Joe Biden now. You guys see how malicious these people are in their role? I could see what they're going to say, though, in regards to propaganda. It'll be like, well, look, right now, the Democratic movement, it's out of steam. Like when a train is moving and it's out of steam. <laughs> hey, I, I got to give credit. Thank you, Beavis and Butthead, for give, you making me use this. Once it's out of steam, then it's out. But you got to put more coal into it so there's more steam into the train. And they're going to start getting – they're going to try to get people to uh, put more steam into their engine for the Democrats. But people, you wake up. Look. Uh, I, I knew that this was what this was going to happen. They weren't going to do anything about student debt. Uh, I was surprised about was affirmative action that threw me off guard. But OK, hey, Supreme Court did that. Old school Joe Biden would have would have loved that. Um, but for all those people who have been criticizing hard lens or due dissonance or RBN, what leg do you have left to stand on? We have once again been proven correct. And it's not that we rejoice in seeing people suffer or rights being taken away. But we knew that the Democrats weren't going to do a damn thing. They sold you platitudes. They sold you lies to make you feel comfortable and that you were somehow resisting the bad (laughs) orange Cheeto. But what they didn't tell you is that the Democrats in office are just as bad. Many of these politicians don't care about the issues you care about. So when we criticize and come up with solutions against the Democratic establishment, maybe for just a minute, listen to what we're saying so that you're not automatically triggered by somebody taking you out of your safe space. Because if this doesn't wake you up, I don't know what will. Well, the, this is, show, the, this really, ahead, it's, it's, ahead, it's, it's, it's kind of a postmodern vision of politics. It's politics as gestures, as phrases, as buzzwords, without the substance of accomplishment. It's a politics mm-hmm. you have to be right. very secure to afford. And you really look at this next generation like Ayanna Presley, like AOC, mm. um, that have really come up with social media. And that's what it is. It's almost a virtual reality version of politics. Can you have a politics where there's no expectation of accomplishments or tangible goals? It is purely a gestural. It is purely aesthetic. It's mm. purely signaling. That, that It seems like that's all they expect to deliver and they expect the people who follow them to accept that 